and wouldn't you know it? Oops, sorry, wrong one. Stop this. Good morning or good evening everyone. How are you? And welcome to today's live. Now, today I am going to be interviewing one of my clients, Joanne. And um, Joanne's got a great story for us. Joanne um, had developed a, an aggressive form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and realized she had one functioning kidney and this health challenge actually changed her life um, and changed her life quite considerably and so i'd like to bring her on now i'm not going to tell you too much of her story um, but i'm going to bring her on um, and she can tell you about her story now um, for any of you who might be new around here joanne you can come on if you want <laughs> Um, for any of you who don't know me, um, <laughs> I am Karen. I'm the Plant Power Coach. This is my group, if you're inside my group, Plant Based Weight Loss Support. Um, if you're watching on the replay on YouTube and you're not part of the group, come and join us. This is where we get to have all the conversations. We get to, you know, have community come together. Um, I'm also the creator of Plant Power Transformation, which is my transformative health and weight loss program. Um, it's designed to help you not only lose the weight, but take you through a bit of a personal transformation um, so that your results are permanent. So, um, yeah, if you're new around here, that's uh, I hope to bring you all sorts of content that's going to help you achieve your weight loss goals, but also help you um, step into your, I guess, most powerful and most healthy version of you. So um, if you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe if you want to hear more updates from me. Uh, and if you have friends and family struggling, then make sure that you share these messages with them, please. All righty, let's bring on Joanne. And hi, Joanne. It's so good to see you again. Hi. <laughs> hi. It's been a minute. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'd love to go back to, I guess, the start of your, I guess, your health or failing health journey. Um, when yeah. When you first discovered that you were sick and, um, you know, what you went through and what it was that led you towards wanting to be plant-based talk us through that okay so um in 2018 i um i was 40 years old <clears throat> and i was part of a self-defense school for many years and i finally decided to go for my black belt um that process is three months long um, well, just the boot camp is three months long, um, and you have to be invited to do it. It's very intense, um, and it's a it's challenging not just physically but mentally. And um, and I, I did it. I got my my black belt, and during that process, I had a um, actually hired a personal trainer because I could never. I could never lose weight. And when, if I did, it was maybe eight pounds and then it'd become right back on. And it was very frustrating. Um, I worked out at least six days a week. I know to this day what three ounces of chicken looks like. I mean, I was really particular and um, I lost uh, 20, 23, 24 pounds at that time. And that was a four month program. Mm -hmm. um, I looked defined and I thought it, this is the best condition I've ever been in my entire life. And um, six weeks after I received my black belt, um, I thought I was having a heart attack. Um, it was the middle of the night. And to keep that story short, basically, I, 
I really thought it was because I had worked out so much. I probably pulled something um, and I wasn't taking it seriously. So my husband certainly was and demanded that I go to the hospital. So um, when he, we ended up calling an ambulance because every time I moved, I was in pain. Like I felt like this cramping in my chest. And if I took a deep breath at her and it just was extremely scary. So I thought it was a heart attack and um, go via ambulance to the hospital, stay there all night. They're running x-rays and tests and blood work and all this stuff um, had given me something for pain. And they also gave me, um, oh, I forget the medicine's name. Um, it's, it's similar to the effects of what an, an aspirin would do, um, a baby aspirin. Mm -hmm. But all night, they're waking me up and asking me the strangest questions. Like, did you, um, you know, do you, do you have back pain? Do you, you know, really weird questions that not, have you lost weight? Yeah, I work out six days a week. I definitely lost weight. Mm -hmm. Or have you been tired? Yeah, I'm 40 and I work out six days a week. Like it, <laughs> to me, it made, everything made sense. Yeah. And um, finally, one of the doctors said, are you having trouble swallowing? And I had mm -hmm. now not even like a few days before that I work in the operating room and I was talking to um, a gastrointestinal um, doctor. She does a lot of endoscopy. So I was asking her about it and she thought it was some kind of reflux not to worry. So I really didn't take it seriously. Well, what it was, was a, a tumor the size of a grapefruit on my thymus gland. So that's why I was having the chest the pain. Size. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. 10. Yeah. Like you, you have to dilate 10 centimeters to have a baby. So <laughs> it's a <Yeah>. good size. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, um, yeah, it, and then that made sense. So it was actually pushing. That's how big it was. It was like pushing at the very base of my esophagus. So it made it hard to swallow. And um, and then also if I would breathe deep, there's no room. So yeah. it was pressing. There's a lot of nervous tissue. So um, that's how they explained it to me. So that's why it was hurting. Um, it was just the strangest thing. And then a lot of other things started to make sense. I was like, oh, I thought I was just tired from like working out like that. But my husband was like, you come home from work and you take an hour and a half nap before you go work out and you come home and you're so tired, you don't even want to shower. Yeah. So I, um, I had skin cancer diagnosis. I, I was getting really tired and it was almost like every time I did a workout, um, mm -hmm. I just felt like my energy would plummet and I felt like I was getting the flu almost though I could tell there was something not quite right so yeah 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 just, like the amount of energy it, that drains from you, if you as your body's trying to fight this thing yeah it's incredible yeah and I was like here I am thinking I this is what it's like to f feel healthy like I'm working out so much I'm exhausting myself basically but that mm -hmm. was not exactly it mm -hmm. um so then um they the kind that I had is called large B cell lymphoma. And apparently it's very aggressive. It grows very quickly. Mm -hmm. She didn't even think that I had it for um, a year. She said maybe six to eight months. Mm -hmm. So um, that's pretty big um, for that amount of time, especially. So because it grows quickly like that, they have to treat it very aggressively as well. Mm -hmm. um, my treatments that, involved... Um... I guess your diet too previously, like if you were working with a trainer and you were, you know, eating lots of animal foods, lots of chicken and stuff like that, you know, which we know all primarily, yes, gym junkies think is the healthy way to eat. Um, that's a lot, that's stimulating a lot of IGF one in your body um, and probably promoting very mm -hmm. quick, quick growth. So those cancer cells have probably been there for a long time. But now that you're stressing your body with all this exercise and adding um, added, you know, like intense levels of IGF-1 to, um, to mm -hmm. those cells and, and like it's like putting um, gasoline on the fire. So your immune system's right. in your brain and you've got this gasoline going on. Yeah. So it's probably just it's probably just shot up very, very quickly. Your body's not been able to cope. So yeah. 
Amazing. Okay, so carry on. So my treatments involved, um, it was six or seven days, depending on the timing in the hospital, because I think they're on time two times ever for my treatments, okay. um, which really stinks. But um, so I spent a lot of time. I was con- It was a 24-hour infusion for the entire week. So I was connected to that pole the- for the week. Um, I was very bored. This is, I'm somebody who was like out and about. I go to self-defense. I'm pretty social. I love cooking. I like doing things. And now I was like stuck in front of this crappy television watching like racing or something. (laughs) Um, I'm just, it was just an example. They didn't have a lot of selections, but um, so I opened up my um, Kindle and I just looked up what, causes large B cell lymphoma. (laughs) And you know what happens when you type something into your, into a search, suddenly you're getting flooded with information. So um, I looked, tried to look for like .edu sites or .gov or whatever, but I kept coming across um, red meat. Okay. And I was like, what do you, that doesn't make sense to me at all. Like they tell us to eat that, you know? Yes. So when I looked it up, I was like, what is a class one carcinogen? (laughs) A carcinogen like cigarettes? Like I, I, so my head was like, really Mm -hmm. alarms are going off. I was like, what the heck is this? Um, And then I came across, you know, um, a lot of vegan information and a lot like it was just constant and I honestly didn't even want to go to sleep I felt like the literal description of going down the rabbit hole like I just was I felt almost obsessed like I just uncovered some secret no one knew about but it was me that didn't know (laughs) um so I just started uh looking up you know um forks over knives was a place that I had started. And I had seen that movie years before. I had a friend who was vegan in the nineties, which is very rare. Yeah. Um, and she let me borrow her book and I was like, oh, and I just thought it was like a healthy way to eat. I didn't, that's, I was basically interested in like, oh, it's, it's good for me. It's healthy. <laughs> just like chicken. Yeah. And <laughs> Yes. Okay. And, yeah. Another diet fair or another health fad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it wasn't popular around here. Um, as yeah. far as I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Um, certain groups of people really, you know, were aware, but, um, I wasn't one of them, but anyway, um, so I just really started diving into that book. Um, I started listening to the physicians committee, for Responsible Medicine's podcast, The Exam Room. Yeah. Um, amazing, incredible information right. there. Um, you know, Neil Barnard is in charge of that. And I, I, he, yeah, it just blew my mind. Yeah, he's so great. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm looking at Chuck's before and after. And I'm, I mean, I it just really blew my mind. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. And then I joined the group on Facebook because I was like, I'm going to need some recipes on this because this is too much. This is, I, how, how am I going to do that? So I honestly started with what do I know? Um, well, oatmeal. Um, that's really and, good, ooh, cause that's what I say to people too. Like think of meals that you already eat or already are familiar yeah. with that mm-hmm. are plant-based. I was like, <laughs> very easy fruit. Places. Yeah. Peanut butter. Yeah. Um, vegetables. Thank goodness. I love, I always did like vegetables. So that wasn't hard. I like food period. I just, <laughs> that was why I thought this would be so challenging, but when it, so I could eat, um, simply like that with, you know, even today I did a whole bunch of, um, tasks around the house. I mean, I was up early and I worked all day And I was like, what can I do that's fast? I just made some rice and some beans. I had some, you know, vegetable sticks and salsa. And, you know, I just, all of that was okay. And it filled me up. And I don't do that every day, but I was in a rush. And I now find things quickly that way. Um, 
uh, oh, fruit, have, have banana and peanut butter. You can put it on a piece of toast. Or I really started to get like, okay, sweet potatoes. I like sweet potatoes. Um, and I would put, I put um, uh, pepitas on them. Yeah. And I put banana and then I did like a drizzle of maple syrup mm-hmm. and I was, I ate it for breakfast and I was like, I would never have eaten a sweet potato for breakfast before ever. No, no, um, it's funny. Yeah, I had certain foods that were designated for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I don't do that anymore. And now you just, if I'm hungry, I eat what I like to eat. That is great. So, yeah. so obviously it was a, a fair switch for you. But you yeah. started to get creative around, particularly around thinking, not what I can't have, but what can I have? I love yes. that mindset too, because it's what I say to people. Um, oftentimes we're focused on all the things that we're trying to give up and where mm-hmm. our focus goes, our energy flows. So if you're focusing on what you're giving up, guess what you're thinking about all the time? And that's all the time. hard to make change. So, you know, think yeah. about what it is that's in front of you. What you know, the abundance of the foods that you've got in front of you and what can you eat and what yeah. um, what do you already know of um, that you can eat? Like oatmeal is a really easy one. Um, and people yeah. are really surprised when they're like, oh, my God, I can eat potatoes again. <gasps> Yay. <laughs> right. You're right. Oh, not the devil. <laughs> um, I know. <laughs> um, so I love that. That's a really great approach. And I love, um, yep. you know, the way you just said, you know, like, dropping the expectation around what you have for certain meals and just think of having food just making tasty food so yeah um, yeah so and it, so that that change for you was it was it an like was it easy once you kind of got going with it or did you still have some struggles along the way um i did and in january 2020 um i joined veganuary with a friend of mine mm-hmm. and because I really wanted to find like just one comfort food that I could still go to when I really wanted it, but a plant-based version. And mine was macaroni and cheese. I used to be able to eat that by the box. I love it. Um, And I told her and she said, she told me about a cashew cream recipe. So then I made macaroni and, and cashew cream. And I was like, I'm going to be able to do this. I got to figure out how, what else I can do here. And um, I started really diving into like cooking and like different utensils. Um, And I always liked cooking and I love presentations. I'm a much better cook than I am a baker, um, but I'll get there. (laughs) Um, You got to have some sweets too, but even that can be simple, like some dates with, you know, a pecan and peanut butter or something, but once in a while. But what I was running into uh, where it became difficult was um, holidays. I wanted to host holidays. Um, well, nobody else was doing this in my family. Everybody wants their turkey and stuffing and, you know, um, all of that stuff. Um, so I did it and I would just make myself something small, you know, um, and then, oh, I went to go visit my parents. That was uncomfortable because now I'm not even in my house. And I, I almost feel as if I'm being rude um, by not eating the food. My, my stepfather has won like grilling contests with ribs and things like that. He's a very good um, standard American diet chef. You should send him um, Jeff's um, interview. Remember Jeff the barbecue? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I um I was like, well, you know, I don't do it all the time. So I'm going to be fine with it. I don't want to I didn't want to do that and and feel like I was being rude um when they did holidays and you know, birthdays or I'd have friends at work like make something and bring it in. So it was once in a while I would do that um but when I did the January, what really, this was like the whole tipping point, what was the um, changes that happened in me almost immediately physically. So this is after my treatments, I really, really struggled after that. It was, it was depressing. There had been a lot of changes that happened in 
you know, in my body, I wasn't, I, I wear a Fitbit to keep track of my sleep because it was so poor. I literally was getting two and a half hours of sleep. Sometimes I call, I would call out of work and thankfully my boss actually understood because his son passed from leukemia. So he knew what these treatments were like and how they could be very, very difficult to deal with afterward. So, um, it was that it was, I still had joint pain and I didn't understand why. And, um, they tested me for Lyme, which is, this is the state that it came from. So very, it's, we have a very high incidence. Um, they tested me for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, my father had rheumatoid arthritis Mm -hmm. and I just, when I cut that, the, like it's, I swear it seemed like it was dairy. Um, I just started experimenting that way and it, I suddenly, it didn't hurt. Like I started to be able to run again. Mm. Um, things like that. How long did it take you to experience that change? Like you did Veganuary, was that? Oh, I, so I was, I was strict about it. And I just want to say that even when I did Veganuary, um, I still drank wine at the time. And I also did not exercise. So this was strictly, I just changed the food that I was eating. Yeah. Right. And um, it took about six months, but I had lost, um, I'm going to say 20 pounds because, you know, always bounces around with like a few pounds here and there. But um, I lost 20 pounds. I didn't do anything. I was sleeping through the night suddenly. I counted I was keeping track of like hot flashes so you did because January and then just extended it for for six months is that correct right? yeah okay good That's yes yeah. Yeah. So and um the hot flashes decreased immensely and um you know I don't know I'm sure you have read the study on soy and mm. there's you know 80 percent decrease in hot flashes it's extremely uncomfortable so <laughs> I would try anything yeah. um yeah, just all of these symptoms like stopped and they didn't stop. They didn't take long to stop. It took, I would say I noticed the hot flashes thing probably within days. And the, um, as far as sleeping goes, that became more regular. And I think because I was starting to keep a regular um, routine of, of sleeping because I could sleep through the night. So I could go to work during the day or what or not, because it was 2020. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, that took I would say all of that was about six months. And I went to a cookout. With a friend of mine who's older and they invited us over and she's like, oh, I made. Um, I made uh, their shrimp cocktail. Um, there's cheese and crackers. And I know you don't eat meat. So. And I was just like, thank you. Awesome. You know, and I, I was, that's what, where it started. Like I, I could not bring myself to tell her I don't eat that or I can't eat that. Or it makes me feel, it makes me feel bad. Um, Talk to me about what this struggle was, why it was that you felt so uncomfortable about speaking up in that situation. Um, well, I think that I've always had like this people pleasing type, um, mentality. I am a middle child, which is, that's commonly a trait of middle children. Um, and I would feel that, oh my gosh, they went through all this trouble to do this and, oh, it's ruining somebody else's day or holiday if I'm not, you know, it's annoying them that I'm, you know, that's how it would feel. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's a real effect. so who, who huh? was, who, whose day was really being ruined as a result? This girl, <laughs> <laughs> me for sure, yeah, so- because I would go home and the hot flashes would happen and, um, or I, would my stomach would be in knots. Um, I would feel it in my hands. And sometimes I could even see swelling. Um, so I just was like, God, this sucks. (laughs) You know, I wasn't sleeping well. And so I thought, 
well, once in a while, I still was doing it. I'm like, well, it's not all the time, you know, oh, maybe if you just take some Alka-Seltzer, like most people do for some indigestion or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, somebody suggested I take a lactate. Um, there are a lot of different suggestions because that's what we normally do. Yeah. That's what we do yeah, as we that's what we've been taught and what we've learned. Yeah. And I just thought, it's kind of strange, like, or I could just eat the food that makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started to bring my own food or eat before if I was going to like a work function or something like that. And um, my, my, my parents, my, they tried very hard. They, they didn't really understand what I was doing or why. Um, so I started to explain it to my mother and I showed her some of the food that I was making. And then my sister was interested, like, oh, what are you doing? What are you making? Oh, wait, with cashews or that soy, is that okay? You know, so they were just as confused as I was, you know, um, and friends of ours sent, or friends of my husband's sent me two books. Um, the Nomi Athlete yeah. and uh, Chloe Coscarelli. Yeah, she nice. is an Italian because um, I love that kind of food. And uh, she had a lot of great recipes as well, but I thought that was very thoughtful. So um, I just couldn't understand why I can't, I would would struggle to, to say this. Mm -hmm. And it seemed very easy for others to be like, no, you know, mm -hmm. I can't yeah. or I don't. And that's when um, you connected, wasn't it? When you just were like, I need some help just getting over this and, and, and being able to commit fully to, to yeah. what you do. Yeah. And I had looked you up. Um, I, I know I told you this before, but I had looked you up, um, I believe, when you like, a cut, like two years ago, um, I printed out um, something about the plant power coach, like just reading about what you do. And I just thought, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know, you know. Um, and then a short while later, I was like, I, I need to con, I think I'm going to contact her. And I looked up your um, page and you had grown already so much. And it made me feel like, oh, there are a lot of people looking for like some help in one way or another, whether it's speaking up, finding recipes, finding time. Yeah. Um, get, helping their children to get over this uh, or hop on board. Um, and that can be really stressful, especially when you have a lot of commitments with um, kids and things like that. But um, it took, it did take some time, but a little planning goes a long way. And everybody says, that's the, that's the real kicker. I don't have the time. I see. Uh, so, so was watching too. Hi Tosh. And that was one of the things that Hi. Helped. like the planning side was and, and prepping side was that that was one of the big things that got Tosh over the line as well in terms of you know sticking to it and, and achieving his goals. So yeah, one hundred percent that planning, um planning ahead of time um is it just something that gets you in the right headspace and, and you know yeah. how you're gonna tackle certain situations and just setting yourself up for success. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt kind of afraid, like this is, this is kind of urgent because I was lucky enough to receive treatment and my cancer has gone. But I also found out when they were doing those x-rays that one of my kidneys did not function, period. It shriveled up like a little raisin, they said. So, um, they did say that that could be uh, congenital. Okay. Um, I had never had any symptoms, issues or anything, but just knowing that I mean, we need at least one, and yeah. you can live a whole life with it. But so uh, got one now. still only got one. Correct. I yeah. <laughs> I yeah. That. Wow. So, um, yeah, so you need to protect this one, and let's not, you yeah, know, you know, like give it all the the um, the nutrients that it needs, and instead of you know turning back to the foods that you know are going to harm it. Yeah. So I kind of was going through a lot of like guilt, like no, you really need this. This needs to happen. Um, but I also was struggling still so much to 
you know, for my own reasons. And then when you figure it out, it's, it made it a little easier. Um, I was just like, you know what? I have always done that. And then I'm upset later. And um, with a, a lot of, in a lot of different ways, or I don't say anything. I don't say anything. I don't say anything. And then I burst and that's not helpful to anybody. So, so um, yeah, are you, um, you know, are you okay to sort of tell people what it was you were really struggling with and why you were struggling to commit and what it was we identified and what it was that we sort of worked on to help you feel strong in that space? Yeah, I was explaining it to um, my mother. She was one of the first people that I told about it because it's my mom. Mm. She's known me my whole life. But um, also because going to their house was, I felt I like I, could, I couldn't say no. Oh, I'll just have a little bit. And so I felt like she could be the first person that I just say, I'm not going to eat those foods anymore um and when I visit we can go to the grocery store and and I'll cook and maybe we can you know make a dessert together or something you know what I mean so that was kind of nice but um I started talking to people at work about it and I like I said I work in the operating room um I'm a surgical technologist and um so I am not a registered nurse I am not a surgeon. I am not a nurse anesthetist. I am not an anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. I'm a tech. So speaking about it, I felt kind of insecure because I'm working with some really highly educated people. And I felt um, sometimes I would get a little, a little challenging pushback, but, you know, with questions that I didn't quite know the answers to. Um, So I really felt like, this isn't me, like, it's, it's okay, you know, it's once in a while, and things like that, but uh, the more that I educated myself, and the more that I talked about it at work, um, even some of the doctors were, were like, that, that's the healthiest way that you could possibly be eating, Mm -hmm. Um, and another, the, excuse me, the GI doctors, they are all for it because it helps them, you know, the high fiber, the, you know, non-inflammatory foods, Mm -hmm. um, things like that, because that's why people see them. That's why they're in there getting those, you know, colonoscopies Mm -hmm. done and everything um, because they have IBS or, you know, other things like that. So, um, so they, I think that they started to realize, wow, she talks about this all the time. And one of the, I started to go to school for nursing uh, to get my degree, but I, it wasn't nursing that I, I really was interested in. I really enjoy being at the table during surgery that I really like that. Um, And as a nurse, you're not at the table. So I was going through school for that. And I'm, I'm 45. Like that's, it's a long, it's a lot of school because they didn't accept my original credits because they were so 20 years ago. And so I was frustrated and tired because I felt like this isn't even really what I am interested in. Mm -hmm. Um, which, you know, I mean the paycheck maybe, but, um, I like, I love cooking and I love, teaching people about eating this way and talking about how it's made so many different, such a difference in, in my life. So one of the nurses that I was working with, she said, I don't think you should go to, I don't think you should stay in school for nursing. And I was like, what? Like nobody ever says that. And she goes, you're, you're passionate about about the uh, plant-based thing and you're passionate about cooking. And I really think that you should do something with that. And I was just like, I know, but I kept coming back to the money. Um, Everybody goes to work for money, right? Um, That's the number one reason we've got to make a living. And I thought about it and I'm just like, I don't know if I can do that, but I started 
looking into schools, couldn't find a program. And then poof, one <laughs> popped up on my screen, you know, like it does with the internet. And um, I thought, I want to make this easy for people. I want to help them like understand it, it doesn't have to be that hard and help them do the meal prep that they hate doing um, or don't have time to do. Mm -hmm. So I set up um, a little research and had a few friends, about eight friends. I said, I, I only want you to pay for the food, but I want to see if this is something that I, I can do and something that um, I want to do. So I, I did, and I took all of their feed. I wrote down what it, what it was that I was giving people each week and laying out 18 salad bowls and making two different kinds of soups. And, um, cause those are great for lunches and, and everybody kind of struggles with packing a lunch. And so I thought that would be like a great, where to, great place to start. Um, and I did that for a couple months. And I quit my job and I enrolled in school full time. And um, I do work, actually, I do work per diem there. I'm not there all the time. I, I pick up hours where I can because um, it's flex, it's, I needed the flexibility. So I'm doing that. And I got back in to waitressing. Um, I had been a server for 17 years on and off and loved it. It's very social and, um, and I work at a great place. It's, it's seafood and stuff, but, uh, this is new England. So that's, that's big. And, um, just to kind of get my feet wet again, back in the restaurant in that industry, you know? Um, so I start my externship in August. Fantastic. Tell us about your dreams. Tell us about what it is that you're working on next. Like the, this vision that you have for yourself and where you would love to take this new venture that you're on. Well, I want to, I'm, I feel that I, it's smart to start small because I don't want to become overwhelmed or, you know, make a whole bunch of mistakes. So there will be mistakes made, I'm sure. But, um, I figured my externship, I'll start there. You get some experience with all of the equipment in the um, in the kitchen. Um, and then I will be, I looked into um, rental kitchens, um, you know, places that I'm allowed to uh, prepare food for mm -hmm. the public. And I do have a few, um, a few ideas for that, um, but eventually I, I want to make this food for people mm -hmm. and share the literature that I have that is published, that is written by, you know, medical doctors um, and grow from there. Um, I mean, the sky's the limit, really. I, mm -hmm. I would love to see it like, you know, I have a few, few people that I really admire um, that have been quite the, you know, few influencers that I really like uh, quite a bit. So Tabitha Brown is one of them. Uh, she's on, she's on, uh, I first saw her on Instagram or Facebook and she was doing a video and she just was so funny, but she was making a carrot dog. Oh, and yeah. I was like, no way. And then I tried it. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good. I, I still haven't tried carrot dogs yet. That's on the list. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I tried that, and I mean, of course, no, it's not exactly like a hot dog, but it had a similar texture and, you know, the smoky flavor and things like that, but um, yeah, so that's okay, cool. that's where I want to go with it. So, you know, what would it say, lips, um, lips, ears and assholes or something? Or... <laughs> yes, oh my God, that post oh, is so funny. Let's not eat that, let's have carrots instead. <laughs> <laughs> gross do you, do you want to like do you see yourself um being like a not a caterer but like like a food delivery service like fully prepared meals um that yeah. are delivering out to people that's amazing yeah um, yeah and, and catering is definitely that is on the list because a lot of people 
um, especially that have like somebody with a very severe allergy, um, especially with things like dairy, desserts, um, a lot of cream sauces and things like that. It's, I mean, it, if you don't know, it's, it is tough to find a good one right away. Um, so people kind of look for that. Um, I've seen a bakery, a vegan bakery, um, and they're doing, they're doing pretty well actually. So. And I guess if you're doing it the healthy way too, because there, you know, now these days there are lots of alternatives to dairy foods and animal foods, you know, faux meats, faux cheeses or faux, you know, creams, dairies, all that sort of stuff. But they're not necessarily like the healthiest version either. They're still processed and made in a factory and still create, you know, gut distress and allergies and all that sort of stuff. Um, I know that I was having a lot of gut distress and... And allergies and stuff when I was eating that sort of stuff. So yeah, to have some, have a healthy version available to people, um, even if they're not plant-based, you know, I'm sure that some of those options will, it it will help people step into looking after their health um, uh, more in a more easy way. Um, There's a group over here called um, Garden of Vegan. They do Mm -hmm. plant-based, no oil recipes. um, And they've just got, you know, a certain amount of, (coughs) You know, they've got breakfast, lunch, <coughs> all sorts of things that you can choose from. I haven't tried them yet. Um, but, yeah, that, they're, they're growing and they're expanding and they're now distributing um, all over the country here in Australia. So, you know, if you That's see, awesome. there is, there is <coughs> policy, let's just say, the U.S. is the, size, the physical size of Australia. So, um, but with a lot more people and um, a lot mm-hmm. of throughout the whole country. <laughs> You know, start with a vision and um, see where it where it leads you. Um, yeah. And um, and, and you wanted to do a bit of like education, didn't you, as well? Like helping. Oh yeah. People. Absolutely. I feel like see that- another thing um, that I didn't bring up was after I was um, officially clear in 2019 mm-hmm. of cancer, um, I felt it was. That was in March. No, March was my last treatment. April, totally clear. Mm -hmm. August, we went to visit my husband's family across the country. And my first day there, I got a call that my stepfather had a heart attack. Okay. And he he survived, but he did crash um, an SUV. Um, And then... We, we were there for 10 days and we came back home. And a few days after that, we found out that my brother-in-law had a stroke. Wow. And then um, that was the end of August. And then two months later, my father passed away okay. from complications with many heart and lung uh, diseases. All sorts of things um, that avoided on a plant-based diet, right? Yeah. And it just... It was really shocking. That's a, a lot. And I, so I actually never got to see my dad after September, 2018, and he didn't die until November, 2019. I was to arrive four days before, uh, he died four days before I was arriving. So, uh, it was very sad, but I also am part of, I used to be the heart walk coach for, um, for the American heart association. Okay. So I've done a lot of homework on cardiovascular diseases, excuse me, and, um, and just reading and, you know, even reading what they recommend, and it just doesn't make sense to me that they're recommended. So I would like to teach people, maybe this is not really the best choice. Um, And here we have people have me and I used to too. I mean, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know. Um, and when I was reading about the blue zones, they occasionally had fish or or meat, but it was maybe once a month, uh, twice a month at a celebration, and that includes celebrations like Christmas and birthdays and things like that. So um, I just realized the massive consumption of animal products that we have 
and looking at all of the health ailments, I'm like, people need to know this. Cause I def I didn't know my father didn't know, you know? Um, and some people will say, Hey, you only live once because I've heard that too, but I uh, probably not for as long as you possibly could. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can only, yeah. You only live once and half of it will be yeah. only once and in a hospital or in doctor's surgery. Right. Wearing, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of different things. What do you want in that life? Yeah. So, um, yeah, okay, so this is a fantastic vision that you have um, in front of you, and I'm really excited to see where you take this. And, I am too. <laughs> um, yeah. Would you like to um, uh, just tell people where they can follow you if they want to? Yes. I. Um, <clears throat> so I started. And stuff. Yeah, <laughs> she's got great. Yeah, <clears throat> I do have to add some content, just that's my I will. I will be adding more content. I'm a little. I'm a little new to uh, Instagram skills, but um, but I'm learning, and um, some of it is great, and some of it is like, well, she's practicing. So that's okay. Uh, I, and you know what? If you say that, if you say mm -hmm. that, and just say, you know, here's me putting out practicing some of my reels. People love it when you're real. They don't want to see you perfect. Yeah. You more. Like I know. So true. More, um, um, attainable, more, um, more real, more, um, more human when you yeah. are less than, you know, not perfect. So, <laughs> and that's kind of like where I'm going with it because I like the way that I see myself is I, um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not, a you know, a, a nurse or any of those very, highly respected uh, professionals, but um, I'm just like everybody else yeah. is, is really it. And it can be done. Um, and guys, this is I, something that Joanne really struggled with on her journey was putting everybody else up here above her and not really believing that she in herself and thinking that, you know, somehow she was less than because she didn't have all these letters after her name, but yeah, the letters after somebody's name doesn't mean anything. Those people don't even understand health necessarily themselves. They know how to do surgeries, administer drugs and mop up the mess that people are making. But they, you are the one at the start of the journey and helping people to clean up their health before they need to get to that stage. So you That's the idea. You don't need all those letters after your name. <laughs> yeah. No, and really I got, I mean, I learned so much just from reading and the podcasts and everything and listening to, I mean, I'm basically listening to these while I clean my house, I could be cleaning for two hours, get into podcasts. And I mean, with incredible information mm -hmm. and studies, you know, yeah. um, but I, you know, I used to eat that way and I didn't, I had quite a period of my life where I didn't exercise and I smoked cigarettes for 20 years and drank way more than I should have. And, um, but you don't, you don't have to continue living that way because it's not, it doesn't have to be my identity forever, basically. Yeah. yeah. And, and people love it yeah. when they see a transformational story too, you know, from somebody who used to, you know, potentially have the same daily habits as they have. And now, you know, has been able to make that change and make that commitment and is now helping other people to do the same thing as well. So well done. Um, what is your Instagram handle? Just so everyone. It's can called um, officially, um, officially planted. And, um, it has, um, the, the photo is a, it's a heart shape of my, um, my garden produce that I grew myself. I was very proud of it. <laughs> ED, right? There's officially plant underscore ED. Just ED, so. yes. So, yeah. Thank you. I remember going Correct. to you once and like, hang on, I can't find her anyway. What Little play on the name because yeah. it's like officially planted, but the ED is also part for education. I love that. That's so good. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, yes, I, I, I love this transformational journey. Um, you've really, um, you know, let, you've really let down a lot of your blocks and the fears about um, fully embracing this way of life and realizing that, you know, 
you're not letting anybody else down. You're just letting yourself down when you don't really fully commit. Um, other people have got their own shit going on and that's okay. And by mm -hmm. you stepping into your power um, and fully committing to this, you are giving other people permission to do the same, um, whether that's your yeah. friends and your family. Um, when they see mm -hmm. you do it and they see you starting to shine and they see you having the health um, and the weight results that they want as well, right? That, yeah. that That is going to be something that they will notice. And, um, you know, when they are starting to, you know, their bodies are starting to fall apart and they on all sorts of medications, they're going to be like, Joanne, I need help. Joanne, I need help. Um, yeah. So this is, this is the powerful part for you um, and helping people just, you know, really fully embrace um, this lifestyle as well. It's, it's very powerful. And um, yeah, you realize you don't need, you don't need letters after your name in order to be uh, a powerful, uh, strong person <laughs> at all. Yeah. So I cannot wait to see where you, um, where you go with this um, because I definitely think you've got a vision there um, and a vision that, is well and truly needed guys i don't know if you if any of you are in the forks over knives group once upon a time there was a post in the forks over knives group and someone said we need forks over knives to set up restaurants all over this all over the country being the us and i just tagged john and said see <laughs> there is demand yep. girl. <laughs> i can't wait yes uh, amazing well it's been great to have you here and thanks for sharing your story Oh, thank you. Um, and so, it was fun. <laughs> yes, I always love it. I always love chatting to, chatting to people about their stories. Um, but um, so, for any of you out there, um, if you're watching and you um, are either struggling to make that full commitment for yourself, or you are really struggling with um, knowing um, how to achieve your health goals, your weight loss goals, um, then you know, come and have a chat to me. Um, we can book a just a one-on-one -on -one private call uh, where we can just have a chat about what it is that you're struggling with um, and talk about what your goals actually are. And we can create a bit of a roadmap for you to be able to get there and sort of understand what those blocks are that are really holding you back. Um, and um, if I think I can help you for the, for the longer term and you, you are ready for some more long-term support and help, we can talk about what that looks like. Um, and this month, um, in the month of July, I have a one month free coaching offer for anyone who signs up in July. So um, if you sign up for my six month uh, Plant Power Transformation coaching program, um, I'm going to throw in another month for free. So you get seven for the price of six. Um, so essentially, this means that you're going to get all the support that you need. Um, so that you can stay on track through that Christmas and New Year period because that can be a really tricky time for a lot of people and for anyone mm -hmm. in the US, obviously, that is um, the Thanksgiving period as well. Very social time for a lot of people. Um, a lot of food pressure out there to you know conform to what everybody else wants to eat. It can be difficult if you're trying to lose weight to stay on track during that time. A lot of people just go screw it and throw it out the window at that time of year. And then come to New Year and it's like, oh, weight loss has got to go back on to the, uh, the New Year's resolution or I'm going to start yes. again, right? So yes. I want you to just, I want you to be able to tick this off your list um, for once <clears throat> once and for good. So, um, so no need to change everything all at once. We're just going to start with some small changes, um, small habit changes week after week. And then we'll start to dig in and work through the mindset blocks, the emotional blocks, whatever it is that might be standing in your way that is preventing you on your own uh, from being able to achieve this result. Um, so I know that coaching isn't necessarily for everybody. Some people can just hear the information and boom, they make the change, no problem. But for anybody who might be struggling and constantly sabotaging, this is where coaching can be powerful. All right, we start to understand what is behind the sabotage, the fears, the doubts, the, the resistance. Um, we can look at the patterns and really start to work on releasing those patterns um, so um, if any of you are interested in having a chat, I've dropped my Calendly link at the top of this live video um, or just type in the chat and just say, uh, I don't know, just say, let's have a chat, please. Um, and uh, or just send me a direct DM and we can, uh, and we can talk about uh, whether this is right for you or not.
Right. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in today. And thank you so much, Joanne. <laughs> thank you, Karen. It's good talking to you. Yes. And please do stay in touch. And I will definitely be following your progress on Instagram. I want to steal those um, sushi recipes. I've had a little go at making my own. And it was like the start in there. <laughs> a few fails. In fun. There. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I liked the nigiri, but the, the dragon roll, it was a bit difficult. And I was like, I put too much. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can give me some um, some tips on how to make that even better. Um, right. Okay, Medea, well, thank you so much. And um, All right. yeah, I look thank forward you. to chatting to you again soon. Okay, ciao. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>